comes from the quiet Cotswold village of Painswick in Gloucestershire, where a heartless culprit robbed a high street charity shop and terrified its staff and a regular customer. Nestled in the Gloucestershire countryside is the picture postcard village of Painswick. With its mellow Cotswold stone buildings, it's a popular destination with tourists. 72-year-old Leslie Warriner has lived here for most of her life. I came to Painswick as a children's nanny to a local family, and I stayed and got married. It's quiet and pleasant. It's definitely a safe place to live. But last December, all that changed, and her peaceful life here was shattered. We went to the supermarket. I went down to the village to my Tai Chi class. And then when that finished, I walked up to the charity shop as we usually do once a week. The charity shop Leslie visited supports a local hospice, providing end-of-life care and support for families. It was donation day, so I'd had quite a few bags being delivered by the till. Obviously aware Mrs. Warriner was in the shop. But Valerie and Leslie weren't alone for long. I must have been in there about 15 minutes before the gentleman came in. Didn't really look at me, didn't really take any notice at all of him. Just carried on looking. The doorbell wasn't working, so I didn't hear somebody else come in. When I came to pick up a donation, I just realized, looking in the mirror, there was somebody else in the shop. A male stood over by the books. Leslie had found a jumper she liked and was waiting by the till. But she quickly had the feeling that something wasn't right. Suddenly, somebody appeared really close to me at my back, too close for comfort. Because people don't stand that close to you, do they, when they're waiting behind you? I went to the till, picked up the scanner to scan the barcode, and as I put my head down and looked back up, the male was behind the customer with a knife in her throat. It was so quick, and I mean so quick. From putting my head down to putting it back up, he was there. I could feel myself shaking, and I was worried that my legs were going to give way. And I thought, if I suddenly go down, what's he going to do? Holding Leslie hostage, the suspect demanded the money from the till. My immediate words were, you've got to be kidding me, especially as we're a charity shop. And he said, no, I'm desperate. Give me the money. He then also asked my customer for her money as well. I feared for my life because I felt so helpless. I just didn't know what he was going to do. I can remember thinking, is he going to do something terrible? With Leslie being held at knife point, Valerie did as she was told. With somebody with a knife, I just couldn't take any chances. I just tried to keep extremely calm, do exactly what he wanted. My main concern was Leslie at all times. The armed robber then took the money and ran from the shop. He left with just 63 pounds from the till and 14 pounds from Leslie. But the robbery has had a much higher cost than that. I'm fuming, absolutely fuming. I want him locked up for what he's done, for what he's done to us as a charity, but particularly for Leslie. It's knocked me back quite a bit. It's made me into quite a nervous person. I don't sleep very well, and uh, I'm not as happy to do stuff now as I was. It's just made me not trust anybody. joined now by DS Marcus McInerney from Gloucestershire Constabulary. Welcome, Marcus. Um, not only is it a beautiful, peaceful village, but the amount of force that was used for, for what was under £100, it just seems totally unnecessary, doesn't it? Yeah, it was completely excessive. I mean, she had, you know, an arm around her neck and a, a knife up to her throat, and it's, you know, for that, it's uh, had a huge impact. For, for under under £100. So we clearly need to find out who's responsible. What do we know about the suspect? So what we know, we've got a good description, an e-fit and a bizarre comment that he made. Okay, well let's have a look at the e-fit first and talk me through this. 
Okay, she's been described as being early 20s, uh, ginger hair, pale white skin, um, uh, slim build, and he was wearing a black beanie hat, a black jacket and blue jeans. Okay, it is a very, very clear image there, so um, I urge everyone to have a look at that. Just, oh no, I'm going to make sure this is on our website as well, so people can have another look at that as well. But there is that comment you just said there, there was a significant comment that was made as he was leaving the premises, what was that? Yeah, that's right, he was, ch he was challenged by the staff in the shop, and his response was that, you know, the fact that this is a you know, charity job mm. for a hospice, and his response was, I know you helped my mum. So I'm just wondering if viewers see that AFIT and that comment, and it's a local, it's a local hospice, it's Gloucestershire based, so it's it's highly likely saw with a, with local links. That's really interesting, and the shop is linked to that hospice. Correct. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, I mean, he could well have been in the local area. Then, can you just describe to us where that was? We're going to see a map here. Just talk us through where where Painswick is. Absolutely. So Painswick, it's a beautiful village in the Cotswolds. Um, this type of thing is, 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 a, is a huge incident and it had a big impact on the community. It's a tourist attraction in the Cotswolds and there's the uh, local Rococo gardens that people may actually have been. They may have remembered someone fitting that description or fit running past them at the time because it would have been a big deal at the, at the time people, you know. This is huge. We're asking people to cast their minds back not long yeah. before Christmas that they may have been in those gardens and seen someone fitting the description running past them, perhaps not knowing what it was at the time. Yeah. Um, I have to ask, how are Leslie and Valerie doing now? Considering the circumstances, they're doing really well. I mean, fair play to Valerie, she's, she's back in the shop. Um, you know, in respect of Leslie, obviously, to have, to, to have undergone that is deeply traumatic. And she's doing incredibly well in the circumstances, but it'll be a bit of time before she gets her confidence back. And it's just why we really want to identify who it is, hence, you know, that comment. We really do think it's someone with that local link, and if anyone sees the e-fit, and puts the, the comment and the fit together, they might know who it is. Yeah, it could be the missing part of the jigsaw. Correct. Marcus, yeah. thank you.